Hello and welcome to the first video covering the AP Barron's uh, Physics C Mechanics curriculum. And the first video is going to be mostly dealing with background. And so we're going to deal with uh, four con or three concepts rather that you're going to need to know for AP Physics C. The first of which is vectors and scalars. The second is uh, coordinate systems, looking at uh, two two-dimensional coordinate systems, uh, Cartesian and polar coordinates. And last one is unit analysis. Basically, you know, what quantities and units you're going to be measuring and using. So to begin our discussion, we're going to look at the difference between vectors and scalars. Now, both of these are mathematical quantities, but scalars are the numbers that you're more familiar with. They have a quantity, like basically a size, say three or four etc. Uh, but no direction. Now this last point may lead you to the conclusion, uh, the correct conclusion, that vectors are similar to scales except for that they have a direction. So uh, vectors, which are usually represented by an arrow, have a quantity which is given by their length and they have a direction which can be specified by some angle from some other reference point, or it can be specified by components that the vector breaks down into. Now the first thing we're going to be looking at in terms of uh, these quantities is what is known as vector addition and subtraction. So that is if you have two vectors, A and B, how do you add them together? I'm pretty sure you already know how to add scalars together. You just take the two quantities, add them together using the addition, and you get 7, which is easy because there's no direction to specify. However, adding vectors gets a little more complicated, and the way you normally add vectors is what is known as tip to tail. Basically what you do is you take one vector, let's say we're doing b plus a to yield some resultant vector, and normally when you write vectors they can have these little caps on them to indicate that they have a direction. Uh, what you'll do is you'll take the tip of the one vector, say b in this case, and put the other vector's tail on top of it. So if we were to move a over to b, you would get something that looks like this. And the resultant would be from the tail of the first vector to the tip of the second vector, like so. And this is what would be known as the resultant vector. Oppositely, to subtract vectors, uh, if you have A and B, once again, subtracting vectors, you once again do a tip to tail, except for, basically, if you were to subtract A from B, do B minus a equals some r, you would first flip around a. So it's basically the same as b plus negative a. And when you have a negative vector, it's the same length, just in the opposite direction. So here you have negative a, here you have a. And you just take negative a and add it to b to get, you know, there's minus a. And the resultant vector is once again from the tail of B to the tip of A. Now that we've covered addition and subtraction, we'll move on to what is known as scalar multiplication. Now it should be noted that you can't take uh, two vectors and do a traditional multiplication like this. That doesn't work. Um, what you can do, however, is take a vector, say A, and multiply it by some scalar. We'll call that K. And what ends up happening is you will basically take the magnitude of A and then multiply that by K, the magnitude being the length of A, multiply that by K, and you'll get some uh, new magnitude of this new vector KA. And this will be in the same direction as A. Geometrically, you can see if you have A like this and you wanted to get some vector 2A, what you would do is essentially add on a vector of the same length going in the same direction. So you have a plus a, which is 2a. So this whole vector right here would be 
2a. And obviously this scales up for uh, all multiplication of vectors. Moving on now, we're going to discuss the dot product. Now the dot product, which is sometimes called the scalar product, because its result is a scalar, uh, is basically the product of the magnitude of one vector, so the length of this, with uh, the product of the component of another ve vector parallel to the first. Now what does that mean? It basically means you take the magnitude of A and multiply it times the magnitude of B's component on A. So you can break down B into components based on their direction. So for example you could have components like this and they tend to be drawn with right angles because of the coordinate system you know uh, x and y that we normally use, use are at right angles. However, you can also change your coordinate system so that B has two components, one of which runs parallel to A and the other of which is perpendicular to that. So this section right here would be B's component on A or it would be uh, B, the length of B, times the cosine of theta, because if you'll remember, cosine from SOKATOA is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse is B. So the dot product, A dot B, would be, once again, the length of A times the length of this component on A of B, in this case the length of B, and these bars around them simply indicate that you're taking a vector and turning it into some scalar with the length a. So a dot b is the length of a times the length of b times cosine of theta, which is the angle between them. And that's useful for when you're in what are known as polar coordinates, when you're giving, given the length r and the angle theta from a certain axis. Oppositely, what you can do if you're given uh, both of these, let's say these are on the x and y axis like this, and they each have some component uh, a of x and b of x and a of y and b of y. You'll also find that a dot b, when given in this form, is simply a of x times b of x plus a of y times b of y. And just as a special case, uh, we'll go around the unit circle of sorts uh, dealing with this theta. Now because the dot product varies with the cosine of theta, you'll find that at zero, cosine theta is one, then it's just the length of A times the length of B. Oppositely, when theta is pi over two, so when they're 90 degrees separate, uh, the dot product is always zero because uh, this cosine theta becomes zero and this whole term becomes zero. Lastly, when you have, you know, it's at pi, then the dot product will be negative a times b, or norms of a and b, because they're facing, the cosine will be negative, and they're facing opposite directions. Now the last thing we're going to be dealing with in terms of vectors and scalars is what is known as the cross product or sometimes the vector product because the resultant is a vector rather than a scalar. So as the basic function uh, goes, u cross v equals the norm of u times the norm of v times sine of theta. And this all has to do with uh, the product of the magnitudes of the two vectors and uh, the components being perpendicular rather than parallel to one another. However, it's hard to illustrate in this format because the cross product really only works in three dimensions. But we will be using it for uh, physical applications later in this course. And uh, basically, you can mathematically determine the length and whatnot of the cross product from this formula right here. It does great at that. However, determining the actual direction is a bit more complex. And because you can't actually see me right now, uh, I can't illustrate what is known as the right hand rule for determining the direction of cross products, which is uh, illustrated by this drawing I have over here. Basically, if you take u cross v, you take your fingers 
and curl them starting at U, going to V, and this is the fingers on your right hand, in case you can tell from the right hand rule. You curl from U to V in order of the cross product, and which way your thumb points is the direction of the resultant vector. So, U cross V in this case points up, but if you did V cross U, you notice you go the opposite way, your fingers uh, curl the opposite way, and your thumb would have to point down. So U cross V and V cross U are not equal. In other words, they give you different vectors.